Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead uh, for our Tuesday porch time today. Uh, we got some cold weather guys. It's cold, it's uh, been rainy. Um, it's just We're going back into another cold week this week. Uh, it just seems like it's just going to hang around here in the deep, deep south. You know, It's unusual for us to get this much cold for that long. Now it was like that when I was a kid, but hadn't been for... 50 something years, let me say that. So, um, one of the things I want to talk about today, I picked a subject, five things we take for granted today. Now this is five things that we actually have. And I have, and every, most everybody, let me say this, I'm not gonna say everybody, but most everybody has these things. Uh, there are some that don't, but most do. You know, as we go through life, some things in life are so prevalent to us that we don't even think about them anymore. And we've lost them as far as their beauty for our life. And if, yeah, the wind's blowing like crazy today, guys. I mean, just one of them things. Uh, but there's things that, that we lose touch with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's where I want to go today, and I want to talk about it. There's five things now. The first one is touch. Have you ever stopped to think about the fact, the ability of touch sometimes? You take it for granted. When I was a kid, there was one thing that you could look forward to in the spring. And that was the feel of fresh plowed dirt between your toes. As you walked through the garden where your dad had plowed, and you could feel the dirt. It was fresh. It felt so good on your feet. It was a warm day and the coolness of the dirt on your feet, oh, it felt so good to have that fresh dirt squeezing up between your toes as you walked through the field. That's a feeling that most have forgotten today. I dare to say there's very many who even walks through a field barefooted anymore and feels that feeling. It's something that's been lost. Or perhaps a cool breeze on a hot summer day. How many of us feel that anymore? Most on a hot summer day nowadays run jumps under an air conditioner and tries to stay as cool as we can under air conditioning. Oh, I don't want to go outside, it's hot. Back in the old days, people sat on the porch in the evening times after a hard day's work. And even though it was hot and sweltery a lot of times, the breeze would kick up right before the sun went down and you'd feel that cool breeze blowing across the porch as you sat there drinking a glass of iced tea or lemonade or whatever it was that you had, maybe a cool glass of water, trying to just get cooled down before the evening was over. Guys, those are some of the things that we forget about a lot of times. What about the feel of a newborn animal in your hands? A mother has just given birth to a baby animal on your property and she's dried it off and it's all dry and its fur and its skin is so soft and its fur is so so soft and warm and you're sitting there holding it in your arms and it's looking up at you with those little eyes and you know that it's a new and it's a new life there on the farm or perhaps just life in general sometimes we lose touch with life there's so many things that our hands come in touch with that we take for granted on a daily basis. And not only is it the touch, the next thing is our hearing. Have you ever stopped to think about just how much of our hearing we take for granted? When was the last time, late in the evening, you sat down on a porch or outside and you listen to the crickets right before dark 
or the frogs as they begin to holler as nightfall begins to, to fall, or the sound of a whippoorwill late in the afternoon. As their voices ring through the open woods, when's the last time you actually sat down and listened to the sounds of nature like that? And what a peaceful time that can be when you sit and listen to nature when it does its thing in the evenings like that. The birds in the woods, as they warn you of danger in the woods. There's many times that I've been sitting here at the house and I would tell Wanda, I said, there's a snake in the woods over there on the hill I need to go kill. And she would say, how do you know there's a snake in the woods? I said, because the birds are telling me he's there. And I would get my gun and go off over in the woods and sure enough, I'd kill a rattlesnake or something like that, a moccasin or something of that nature would be over in the woods there and the birds would have told me if they were there. Or many times as I sat in a tree stand in the woods, I would listen to the birds. The birds would tell me where the deer were in the woods. And I would know how close they were. Because you see, the birds tell you all these things. If we stop and take time to just listen to the birds. Or perhaps the sound of a turkey as it gobbles early in the morning before the sun comes up. I've sat a many a time on the porch here and listened in the swamps behind me as the turkeys would gobble when the sun, right before the sun began to break the sky. You could listen and you'd hear them cutting up gobbling throughout the, and their, their voice would just ring through the hollers. Those are things that we take for granted. Most people never hear those things. But it's the peaceful sounds, the sounds that nature gives us, that we need to listen to. Or how about the sound of a fish as it strikes around the edge of a pond early in the morning as the sun begins to rise. He's up feeding around the shorelines and he runs up and grabs his little minnows and he splashes in the water and he takes off and goes back. I've heard that sound of many a time sitting on a lake early in the morning fishing. Boy, what a peaceful sound that is. There's not a ripple in the lake anywhere. It's like a sheet of glass. And all of a sudden you see this, this splash along the shoreline. And you know there's a fish over there. He's getting breakfast. Or how about the sound of farm animals when it comes feeding time? Any of you have ever been on a farm? The animals know exactly when their feeding time is. Oh, as they begin to rant and rail and moo and oink and the chickens start cutting up, the turkeys go to cutting up, the, the, the sheep are a bad and the goats are a bellering and blatant and everybody's hollering, it's feeding time. You know, the donkeys are braying, the horses are neighing. And guys, these are sounds that we have forgotten or taken for granted. We don't hear them anymore. Most of us don't even live where we can hear them anymore. And wow, what a tragedy. Or how about the first cry of a newborn baby? As your child is being born and brought into the world and you hear its first breath of air as it begins to cry. Those are things that many times we forget about and we take for granted. I know one time I was speaking in front of a big congregation of people at a church and there was a baby in the background that just kept crying and crying and crying and I noticed that the whole audience kept looking back at that mother thinking, my God, would you just get this child out of here? And I could tell the mother wanted to be in there. I wanted to be in there to hear, but at the same time she was torn with emotions to get up and leave. And I stopped everything right where it was and I told her, I said, ma'am, don't worry about that. I said, because the first sound that my Savior ever made was that exact sound. It doesn't bother me. It may bother some of the rest of them in here, but it doesn't bother me. And that put a peacefulness and a calmness 
over that mother as she sat there with that child. So we see that we found two things now, our touch and our hearing that we've taken for granted many times. But what else have we taken for granted here upon this earth as we live and try to journey on this life? How about our sight? Now, not everybody possesses this. There are those that don't have it. That's because of disease or birth defects or whatever, don't have eyesight. But there are most of us do have it. What about the morning sun as it peeks over the hill and makes first light? My whole life, I've always gotten up from a small, small child to the present day now. I've always got up before the sun comes up. And I look to see that sun when it comes up. Because that's a new day. It's a clean slate. There's nothing on it. It's just a clean slate. And the beauty of the sun when it comes over the horizon tells me the majesty of God's creation. There's nothing that can take the place of that. Not anything. The flower, as it opens in the morning to the rising sun, and it begins to show its beauty. Even the Bible said Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed as one of these. Speaking about a flower. Even Solomon wasn't as beautiful as a flower. And everything he possessed, a flower is one of the most beautiful things that God created. And how many times do we not stop and take and pay attention to it? That's where the old phrase comes from, stop and smell the roses. Guys, our life gets in such a hustle and a bustle sometimes, we don't even take time to stop and look at the beauty that surrounds us. What about a fog? hanging over a lake early in the morning when the air temperature outside is cooler than the water temperature and the water begins to give off steam and fog hangs over a lake. Or what about the great smoky mountains? How that the fog hangs in the mountains because of the contrast of the air temperatures. It gives on the appearance of smoke. God's creation is a beautiful thing to see. But how many of us take time out of our day to even observe these things? How about farm animals early in the morning when they get up and all the babies are nursing and you're looking at creation at its finest? Newborn babies, mamas are feeding them, everybody's heading out to green pastures or sitting around eating, chewing their cud, doing all these things. Or what about the sun when it sets in the evening? There's nothing any more spectacular than to watch a sunset in the afternoon on a bright, clear day. There's nothing that can compare to it. Guys, sight is another thing that's taken for granted in our lives. We live such a fast-paced life, we don't even take time to pay attention to the beauties that are around us. What about smell? How many of you remember the smell of rain after a long, hot, dry spell? And you finally get that first rain. There's nothing like the smell of a fresh rain when it falls from the sky after a long, hot, dry period. What about the smell of an apple pie cooking? There's nothing like it when it comes out of the oven, fresh, right out of the oven. There's nothing like the smell of a fresh apple pie going throughout the house. These are smells that used to be quite common on most homesteads. Lots of people baked pies. What about the smoke from a smokehouse? as the smoke on a cold winter day would just hang and linger in the air and you could just you could take that deep breath of that smoke and you could just taste 
the food that was in the smokehouse. You knew that life was going to be sustained because you could look out in a cold winter day and you could see the smoke just hanging as it would hang on the property like that and just sit. And the smell of that fresh, fresh smell of that smokehouse just lingered in the air. I've actually had my neighbors before tell me, man, you about starved me to death over here with that smokehouse. You know, those are things that guys, you just don't smell anymore. What about a fresh fire that's been built in a fireplace and you walk into a house and you can smell that fire burning in that fireplace? Oh, it gives a sense of warmth. It gives a sense of just peacefulness and warmth that just overtakes your body. And it's like you can just walk up next to it and it's like everything's just okay. Guys, these are things many times we take for granted. What about the smell of holiday meals being cooked in the house? Coming in the house during a holiday time and the big meal is prepared. Oh, all those smells that go throughout the house. There's been many times I could be outside working right before a holiday meal. And I could, the windows would be cracked and letting some air into the house. But that scent, we used people going in and out the doors. You could smell it way out into the fields. You could smell the breads and you could smell all the good food cooking. The turkeys or the hams and all this kind of stuff. Oh. Guys, the pies, nothing can compare to the smell of holiday meals being cooked in a house. How many of us get in such a rat race during the holidays, we forget to stop and smell the meals that's being prepared? How about taste? How many of us have stopped to think about we don't really taste anymore. As a kid growing up, I can remember the taste of cane syrup on a fresh homemade cat head biscuit. Man, there was just nothing any better than that. You just live to have one of mama's or grandma's old cat head biscuits with some fresh cane syrup on it. You just couldn't beat that taste. It was so awesome. And so many people today don't even, when you think of a biscuit, they think of a wop biscuit out of a can. Guys, those aren't even biscuits. <laughs> they don't even come close to a homemade biscuit. It's just amazing how far many of us have gotten from reality. How about being in the garden in the spring and the first English peas come in and you stop in the garden and you shell open that first English pea and you take a bite of it and it's like, oh God, it is so sweet. And you sit there and you taste the first fruit out of the garden and how sweet and delicious it is. How many of us stop and take the time to even enjoy that? Many of us, we don't even think about it. And that's so sad. How about homemade butter on a fresh slice of homemade bread? The way that tastes. There's nothing like homemade butter and homemade bread. Both of them warm, just good to the taste. Guys, these are things we've just lost. How about a ham straight out of the smokehouse? Right after we get through smoking it, bring it inside, let it hang for a few hours to go ahead and cure out, cut us a slice off of it and just taste that fresh, oh, that fresh smoked flavor of that ham. Oh, people just don't do this anymore. It's a dying art. Or how about the taste of a fresh peach cobbler or an apple pie that grandma made? These are things that used to be on homesteads all the time. Grandma was always baking something on that wood stove. And those pies just seemed to taste so good 
coming off of that cast iron. How about fresh homemade apple cider? On a fall day, the apples were crushed up and that fresh apple cider was made and just get a big old glass of it and just sit there and just down it. Wanda and I think about that here. We made some apple cider here last year or two years ago. Man, it was so good. Oh, those are things that we just miss. How about fresh farm vegetables? You know, vegetables straight out of the garden, bring them in, prepare them right then and there, never been frozen, never had any chemicals on them, just good organic vegetables brought in, cooked right there, and man, I mean, there's or eaten fresh. There's nothing that even compares to it. It is just awesome, guys. And yet most of us never get to experience these things. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but in the background right now, my goats are hollering. You know why? It's feeding time. That's why. They know when feeding time is. And that's what I was telling you about. That's one of those sounds that we miss on the homesteads. We miss in life. Most of us don't even have the, we're not even where we can hear the animals anymore. Guys, that's one reason we have animals on our homestead. One is to help support us with butter, cheese, milk, meat, all these things. Not only that, guys, just the beauty of nature at its finest. We get to see them when they birth. We get to hold them. We get to feel them. We get to listen to them. We get to watch them when they nurse. We get to enjoy all these things. Guys, that's one thing that makes homesteading such a jewel to do is because it puts you back in touch with reality as to where everything comes from. And you begin to understand God's entire plan. So many people miss out in life because they never learned to homestead. They miss that part of life and they never really know what God's creation is really all about. I urge you and I challenge you to think about the five things that I talked about because most of us possess all five of them. Our, tur our touch, our sight, our smell, our taste, guys, all these things, our hearing, we all have all these things, most of us. Some of us have to have hearing aids because we've lost most of our hearing. Mine's going because my ears ring all the time and I have a bad ear on this side. But I can still hear fairly decent my eyesight's getting a little dimmer than what it used to be. You know, we all age and we all lose those things as we age. But guys, take advantage of every moment you have and enjoy the five senses that God gave you and do not take them for granted. Thank y'all from Deep South Homestead.